Hi there, today is Monday. I'm getting ready uh, to hit the road, but uh, I sent all the documents to Landstar. I have not heard back from them yet. So I get up at 6 o'clock today and took the trailer uh, to a Mac shop and they replaced the glad hand. See, looks like new. Well, it is new. <laughs> they replaced that one. So now I have the service brakes because that's your service brakes. When I push the brake pedal, right, that's where the air goes. But the this is actually more important. So I'm glad that I did not break this one because this this is your parking brake. So if I would broke this one, I wouldn't be able to drag the trailer because the wheels would be uh, uh, would not spin, right? Because this is blocks everything. And also I'm sending uh, an email. By the way, check this out. See, that's what I did uh, yesterday. Spent like a whole bunch of time. I cleaned up all the rust, but I just used high pressure, uh, high pressure uh, wash. And actually, it cleaned up. It's pretty good. Like there was uh, layers of dead paint, so to speak, like falling off. And I, uh, I used that thing on the tires, you know. And they couldn't. They look kind of like moist. And I clean up the. Uh, the rims and if you saw the new video uh, for sale so it looks pretty good so now tomorrow I'm doing the interior and then I'll take pictures of the interior of the truck and that will be uh, that that would be it and today I sent an email to the plant asking them for a paint coat because one guy suggested he says you cannot find this color you know like it's very hard to it's not yellow it's not orange because you see that's orange Right, so I try to cover those scratches over there, and they just, I thought, hey, this is an orange. No, it's not an orange. And so I want to get um, a paint coat, then I can go, and uh, this guy said, uh, this guy from International, he says, oh, someone can even give you, a, make you a spray, spray can. That would be perfect. But of course, you know, I'm thinking, like, maybe I should have gone with black color. Because black, it's so easy, you just buy uh, rust paint, you don't have to worry about matching, you know, not matching. And it seems like I'm changing lots of lights on my truck lately. You saw me do the extremely dangerous and complicated procedure of replacing the headlight. This one that was burned. Actually, no, it was not burned, it was uh, hit by that big mosquito, right? So this was what, 12 bucks for a regular headlight or $20 because this was a, a high output. Now, I also noticed that one of my lights on the sun visor, you see I have six lights. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. Five lights, what happened to the six? Oh, okay, I think I had five from the factory. But I'm not 100%, I got up at six o'clock this morning, don't ask me. So I had to replace this one. Now compare this to this. So this is twelve dollars. Let's just say for for a basic one, right? How much you guys figure this cost? Well, this one was cheap because this particular this is the bad one that I'm holding in my hand. I already replaced it because this was a traditional halogen light, right? And of course, when you get a new one, a replacement, they don't use that kind of light. Or well, maybe it was an LED. I don't know. But anyway, I just got this one, shiny, you know, see that orange over there, LED, and you just unhook this connector, and unscrew two bolts with this weird, uh, you have to use the weird screwdriver, you know, one of those that you, you can never find. But I found it, and I was able to unclip this clip um, using like only 500 pounds of force, so it was relatively easy. But this light was 40 bucks, Canadian. 40 bucks. So no wonder these trucks cost, you know, $150,000. Anyway, that's done. That's money out of my pocket. What do you do? If I don't replace this, I can get a ticket. Now I gotta go and fix the uh, balancing thing. Why my tires uh, start, uh, my steering wheel starts, uh, you know, moving at about 80 kilometers an hour, speed of 50 miles per hour. And oh, and this morning, so yeah, I went to the Mac shop, and they so they fixed the glad hand. I also asked them to uh, check the brakes because that's what the Kaufman says. After like 100 to 200 miles, you gotta do like the initial uh, check of the brakes. Make sure that the old pads, you know, shoe pad, those uh, brake shoes are okay, not too close, not too far. 
And the guy went out and he just looked at them. He said, oh, they all open. It's very easy to see. He says, everything is good. And he, I asked him to retorque the wheels. That's what you got to do when you use a special wrench to make sure all uh, nuts on the on wheels are tight. So I did that. So now I came back. Now I got to take care of the of that vibration on the on the steering because you know I'm selling the truck next month but I don't want to kill my tires because that thing can damage the tires and plus maybe it's something you know serious and maybe something in the suspension I want to fix it so what we're gonna do now we're gonna attempt another procedure of disconnecting and now that I learned from my mistakes I know that uh, I gotta raise the gooseneck and by the way what caused that thing it's not actually my fault you know like all these scratches over there where i said i couldn't uh, cook back to the trailer the other day you know why because you get used to a traditional fifth wheel on the truck and of course when you just back into it into a kingpin on a trailer on a regular trailer the, your fifth wheel just locks right because it's mechanical it's like a like a door lock you know this thing has a uh, air operated uh, kingpin. Well, it's not a kingpin. Kingpin is actually over there, but the big deal is this safety pin. It's called uh, ride, a ride safety pin. And then the, I think this is neck safety pin. But anyway, that one operates from air. So what happens is that the other day, I thought I would make it easier on the trailer, you know, to reduce the strain. And what I did, I, I, I pulled out my, um, my trailer button on the dashboard and of course all the air went out of the system <laughs> because there was no air, you cannot properly operate that stupid thing. See like this, right? This button here, it's not going to work unless you have air in the system. So that's why you can, first you got to disconnect it, like pull, push, no, pull, pull to unlock. And then you can disconnect the cables and basically now I'm not even going to touch that uh, button on the dash. And that's why I had such a hard time rehooking, you know, because that pin just wouldn't go in. There was not enough pressure in the system. So now I learned that and I le I'm learning this. But today we're going to attempt the disconnect, right? And I'll show you guys the full procedure. So you're in for a treat. And here's what I did. See, just to make sure I'm not going to make any more mistakes. Like I mentioned before, I just retyped and uh, copied and pasted, and now I have these four pages, like the most important stuff. Uh, basically, detaching the neck from the trailer to one page, attaching the, the gooseneck back to the trailer, and then coupling the trailer to the fifth wheel. It's like when the trailer is a single unit and you're just hooking up to the bin. And then what I'm going to do today is the last page here it's actually pretty pretty see uncoupling the trailer from the fifth wheel and that's what I didn't do last time step number five raise okay no this is I did that when the trailer is on the ground continue to push the lift cylinder lever down until the kingpin plate of the trailer is slightly above the fifth wheel plate of the truck and at the same time do not leave the neck too high see that's what I did not do and that's why it slid down and that's why it was so low and that's why I damaged my glad hand so let's see if Uncle Sergi learned from his mistakes yes. very important key
I don't know. I still don't see the. I don't see the gap between the trailer and the fifth wheel. And you see those uh, those hoses there in such position that if there's no clearance, I'll just uh, shave off those uh, hoses. You know. And see, yeah, the gooseneck keeps going down. My suspension is off now, which means that I still have to raise it. This way. Ah, uh -huh. finally. what I should have done. You see, now we cool. Now it's not gonna fall down. Everything is cool here. Yeah, all the pins. The pins are still in place. Okay, so that's what I learned today is that even though they don't mention this in the booklets, that yeah, you still have to drop the suspension on the, on the truck. Because I don't want to damage... Oh, I think that's what they also meant. Yeah, till the... Uh, the plate is supposed to be a little bit off. Huh. Fuck, there's so much to learn about these things. See, my airbags just totally deflated. So, of course, I'm gonna pull forward. Just a little bit. And then I'm gonna reinflate my... See, that's the button that you're not supposed to touch, otherwise it's gonna kill the that kingpin action, right? So now we do this, just move slightly away from the trailer till we clear the kingpin. Let's go check. Let's go check, check and double check to avoid damage. See, beautiful. So now I can raise the truck. And I, I know I bu a button for that, air suspension. <laughs> and right away my, uh, that's my fifth wheel load. It's supposed to start going up to about under 15. Come on. What's our air pressure doing? That's my air pressure. Let's go check. Yeah, okay, you see now we have the gap here. Because that's why I cannot drive without the suspension because my fenders would be rubbing on the on the tires and my airbag is inflated. Uh, we have full clearance. We're good to go. So that was just basically little video for those folks that want to know how stuff works and this is the proper procedure for uncoupling from a Kaufman hydraulic detached IGN a low boy double drop heavy pole trailer thanks for watching I'm Sergey Drachev somewhere in Canada